everyone this is going to be a different video today uh, i was watching a video by blockhead and he was comparing a custom 48 built by limitless customs and so i wanted to do a video to compare my custom 48 here that i built and uh stick around till the end because i'm going to go over the parts on my bike to like um how i installed the handlebar and how much it cost and all that so let's get to it <laughs> Blockhead does such a good job recording his videos here with the transitions and stuff. I wonder what camera he uses. I'm just using my iPhone when I record these uh, little videos and stuff. iPhone and my GoPro. But all of this is on my iPhone. But uh, let me try to do his same little intro thing here with the bike. Mm -hmm. at a Harley Davidson Sportster 48. Sportster 48, still my favorite bike. I'm not gonna change it. I'm gonna stick with the Sportster 48, but I do wonder what year his bike is. Uh, the 2016 and higher models, minus the 2022. And uh, it comes with 49 millimeter forks. So the ones before 2016, they have the 39 millimeter forks. So his looks like, he has some like um, fork gaiters on it right now, the, those fork boots. And I can't really see the um, the size on it, but I, I think it is 2016 and higher. I hit up Jack from Limitless. I said, um, we want to do like a bike. Can you do like a custom tanker stuff for us and we'll put it on our stand? Key takeaway made by a company over here in the UK called Limitless Customs, yeah, right? Like in Manchester. Yeah, so. So this bike was built by Limitless Customs and Rear Rock. So it looks like they worked on it together and uh, that's pretty cool. So Limitless X Rear Rock. My bike was worked on by myself and with the help of Albert from Yang's Moto. Go follow his page, Yang's Moto. It's no longer Yang's Moto Garage. It's Yang's Moto. He changed it. <laughs> I would imagine they sound a lot like a pair of like kinetics, which you guys have heard on my channel before. My OG Iron, I had a set of kinetics on there for a while. It's so a 540 laterals. Look great, but you show up at your location with a little bit of a migraine. So I've seen these kinetics pipes on a lot of bikes recently. I first saw it on the Nikki Boys um, page where, you know, they sell the uh, riding pants and everything. And I thought they looked really cool, but I wonder what company makes it. Uh, it must be a custom company, or is it one company that makes all these pipes? Because they all look very similar with different angles on it. But I, I also wonder if it, it burns your legs or your feet because of the way it's uh, angled down. Like mine, I don't even touch the pipes or anything, and it, it doesn't blow onto my feet or anything. But the way that these pipes look, it looks like it might blow down onto your feet or your legs or something. So I'm not sure. All right, well, so the bike is done in like a bobber-ish style. I do like the bobber look on these bikes. Uh, that's how I wanted to make mine at first. You remember I had the Lapera bobber seat, but uh, fortunately it, w it became uncomfortable. And then I got a new seat by CC Rider and it looks really cool still. It looks more like a cafe racer seat, but it's I'm more for comfort now. And it still looks nice and slim and everything, but I still do like the bobber look. We have limitless drag bars, limitless wing mirrors. I have the Lucky Dave's 12 inch T-bars and stock mirrors flipped upside down. LED front headlight, limitless LED front indicators. Also LED headlight and Rogue Rider Industries LED turn signals. Tank lift, starter coil relocation. We've got new spark plug leads. DK Customs tank lift with wire tuck and also coil and ignition relocation. We've got a limitless air filter, custom exhaust, custom grips, pegs. I have the Arlen S Big Monster Sucker air filter and the Bassani Sweepers exhaust. Looks awesome. Limitless custom solo seat with two inch solo seat springs. The rear end struts have been chopped and painted. I have the CC Rider two up seat. Go check out their website. They have a bunch of cool seats and the rear end isn't chopped. I'm not gonna do it because I did buy a new license plate relocation that I'm gonna mount right on the back. Some custom wrap, custom paint, once again from Rock. And nothing custom about my fuel tank. It is a used 3.3 gallon fuel tank that I bought from a guy from San Diego. And uh, it came off of his 2009 Nightster. You know what? My bike looks a lot like the 2019 to 2020 Roadster. And I never really heard a lot about the Roadster before. Um, I don't see a lot of videos on it, but my bike does look a lot like the Roadster. 
All right, guys, so that is the overview of the bike. Unfortunately, uh, we can't hear it started up. I was so bummed to hear that they couldn't start it up. I really wanted to hear those pipes and how the bike started up and ran and like to see him sitting on it and stuff, but he didn't do that. But I'll show you with mine here. The engine blacked out, looks really great, really draws attention obviously to the exhaust. It definitely does bring attention to the exhaust with the engine blacked out. Uh, I do want to remove a lot of the chrome on my bike, so I wanna see how I can just black things out a little bit more without spending too much. I can't black out the engine. It's gonna cost too much. This says what, acid what? Acid, acid trip. trip. Acid trip. I do really like the paint job on the tank, but you know what I really like is when people put 48 on the tank or something that, you know, it tells them what bike it is. And I kind of wish they put 48 on there instead of Acid Trip. Uh, I do notice that he put a 48 uh, little logo on the side cover, so that's pretty cool. So it would have been cool if he, he spelled out 48 and then it would all match. But, you know, that's my opinion, that's what I like. But one thing that he didn't mention here is the fuel cap, the flush fuel cap that they used on here. And I noticed that it looks very similar to the one that Blockhead uses. And the one that I bought, it's more glossy and black, and I think it looks better and is made by Harley Davidson. So this other one is just a off-brand one. But uh, in my opinion, I think I like the glossy black, and I think he should have did the gloss black on that one just to give it like a nice shine to it. And it's just pure black. This one looks like it's dull, you know, it's dull and matted. And I just like the very glossy, very pure black look on it. So the last thing I want to go over here on my bike is the most custom part, I guess, that I put on this bike is the handlebars. And I had to uh, do quite a bit of things just to get these riser handlebars on it because this 48 doesn't come with the riser clamps. Like I have to swap out the top triple tree, I had to put in new bushings, and then I had to buy the bars. And I had to replace the whole cables, um, extend them because these are 12 inch bars. And then I also had to buy a new mounting bracket for the speedometer. And you know, there's multiple places to mount it. I could have mounted it to the side, but they, it still would have cost the same. And I like it right in, up front in the middle more. I think it looks awesome like that. But uh, I'm gonna tell you the price right now, how much it cost for me to put on these bars. And so it cost me over 1100 to put on these handlebars. So think about that, like $300 for a handlebar, it normally like that's all people wanna spend. Just 300 bucks, you slap on some handlebars. And that's like maximum, you know, most people just buy a $100 handlebars or 150. Uh, my window bars there, those were just $100 type handlebars. But I really wanted this look, I really wanted the T-bars. And these are the San Diego bars made by Lucky Dave's. And these handlebars cost 300 bucks. The top triple tree cost over $300, made by Speed Kings. And there's not a lot around there. I, I was looking up other ones where you can just like modify it with some plates and it does some risers over it, but it does not look good and it does not look safe because I wanted the real way to put these on. For safety, handlebars are so crucial and that's why I also bought the Lucky Dave's bars. They are very good quality, but uh, I really wanted the top triple tree. I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything else uh, that will sacrifice like my safety. And so, you know, swapping out the top triple tree was a must along with bushings for it. So all of that cost so much. Bushings were like uh, 50 bucks, 50 or 60 bucks for the bushings. And I got the good and tight bushings that also Blockhead recommended. And they're very good bushings and it helps with vibration and all that. So if I did the other type of mount, uh, without the top triple tree, it wouldn't have bushings in there. And I don't know how the vibration would be. And I was worried about those things snapping. So the other thing that cost a lot was the cable extension. I bought Burley brand cable extension. I bought the whole kit without, you know, uh, I think you can save a little bit of money if you just research uh, just the right cables to buy. Uh, but the whole kit had everything. And there were some things in the kit that I didn't even use because my bike is newer and I didn't need to rewire things. I didn't need to deep in and all that. It was very straightforward and all I needed were the cables, the brake cable and the clutch and throttle cables. That's all I needed. And I, I just didn't use any of those other stuff. Um, those other stuff are for the older bikes. 
And so I, I know I could have saved some money on that, maybe 40, 50 bucks, somewhere around there. Uh, if I really researched and bought every individual cable, but I just bought the whole kit and it cost quite a bit. And finally, here's the kicker. Um, I saved over $800 installing it by myself with, uh, with Albert. And so I, I did go to a shop to get a quote on it. And I went to my local motorcycle shop and they specialize in Harley Davidson bikes and stuff. Very good place. I did my 1K service there and they did a fantastic job, but he quoted quite a bit. It was 850 for him to install it. He said it would take all day and I didn't want to spend that. And I was just very worried about the top triple tree. I didn't know how to install that, but I did a lot of research and then me and Albert were like, let's just do it. We can do it. It wasn't that bad. It took us five hours actually for two people. So I can see if it was one person, it would take like eight hours all day but uh, we cranked it out in five hours and it wasn't too hard so there you go guys I hope you enjoyed this type of different type of video here um, I just want to share how much it costs to kind of do my bike here um, everything else is stage one really on my bike uh, except for replacing the tank with a 3.3 gallon tank doing a tank lift but everything else was just a stage one and then the handlebar swap out uh, if you have a 883 or a 1200 bike you actually don't have to swap out that top clamp because it comes with that that type of clamp that's made for riser bars already and that's what sucks about the 48 they changed out that top uh, triple tree and they made it a little bit different it made it harder for people and I didn't realize it until I wanted to put on these bars. But I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I will see you in the next one. Hopefully we do a riding video pretty soon. Happy 2023. It's kind of slow right now because it's been raining and, and everything else going on. But, but we'll get right back at it soon. See you guys. Hooligans! Woo! <laughs> These people are like, what the f are you guys doing? Oh yeah, there's a little here. <laughs> Can we do it? Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, oh mine is easy to squeeze through. Uh, mine's a little, little more, a little harder. Alright, let's go. Alright, we got it. 